colonoscopy. Okay, everybody, welcome to Timeless Cookery with Emma Goodwin. And today I have the rather gorgeous Alex Catchpole, who runs the um, company Organogy, um, handmade organic, bursting with life, quality whole foods. Um, so Organogy is a family business nestled in Lewis in the UK, which is southeast, and they produce handmade prebiotic and probiotic whole foods using their own unique recipes aimed at improving gut health and satisfying the taste buds using completely 100% organic ingredients and 100% biode biodegradable packaging because they really care about the health of the customer and of the planet. So welcome, 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 Alex. It's so lovely to see you. Um, I've been really looking forward to this catch up. I haven't, last time I saw you, I think it was in a field at uh, Into the Wild or something like that. Yeah, <laughs> We're thanks, man. Talking about bulletproof coffee or something, but nice to see you again. And um, maybe you could fill people in. So now they know your, your background a little bit about probiotic, prebiotic foods, about what got you into all this. Well, I, uh, it's, thanks for inviting me. I'm really excited to share this chat with you as well. Uh, I've done a, quite a few videos, but I'm often the person in your position asking the questions. So I'm like, ah, really pleased to be on <laughs> the table. Uh, so I've, I've given that a little thought. Uh, and I guess to go right back to the beginning of where my health journey started, I was super fortunate that my mum was a daughter of a guy that had two allotments and grew all his vegetables and was famous in his community for providing vegetables for all the local people. So that's what she knew. And so I've always known my parents to grow cucumbers, tomatoes, peppers, ever since I was tiny, tiny, tiny. So growing and eating vegetables was just natural to me. Uh, so I think I had a really great start that way. But as most kids, you then re rebel, maybe not intentionally or even consciously, but Burger King and, and things did become part of my life, <laughs> uh, unfortunately. But that starts with healthy vegetables, I think, is really important. Uh, and then I guess my personal health journey, and this might surprise you, but as you said in the prelude, all you can do is just be authentic and, and speak from the heart. I was a body piercer in Kent, uh, in a very busy studio. I was mega passionate about body piercing. And the more I looked into it, the more I was like, but you have the piercing, how does it heal? And that got me into like relaxation and breath work to get my clients and myself relaxed to actually have the piercing. And then the skin needs to heal. What components need to regenerate the skin? And that opened the doors, as I'm sure you can imagine. You need the, the building blocks to heal the piercings. And I very quickly became health food fanatical and started eating salads and just like raw food, fruits and vegetables. Um, and just really started looking into what building blocks are going to heal the piercing quicker. Uh, I then got less and less interested in piercing and more and more interested in consciousness and altered states and alkaline foods. And then I fell in with a group of raw vegans that were so vital and vibrant. I was like, I want some of this. And I hang out with these raw vegans for a couple of years. And I was so over piercing by that stage and just into food and nutrition like i say consciousness and altered states and how much food plays a part on your awareness and focus and attention uh, and it's been a journey from there i guess wow so uh, quite a big portion of your kind of drive is about consciousness then it seems from what you've just said Absolutely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I've done, I guess I've chatted to different people and I normally would start my introduction of later on. Oh, I met this person. I got into the food, but I just became fascinated with altered states. That's really what drove me to it. So the body piercing and piercing performances to alter states. And then you'd have to be so well nourished and so healthy to be able to put your body through these certain, um, situations to alter the mind to have these almost out-of-body experiences um, 
And it's, so for me, that's really important as the starting point of the journey. Uh, and just like I say, I wasn't sure if you were expecting this answer from me, but I was just straight off the bat interested in yeah. altering states. Well, I definitely want to talk a bit more about that, but just, just to kind of backpedal a little bit to get down to the kind of nitty gritty of the probiotic prebiotic, maybe we could just talk about what's the difference between prebiotic and probiotic for people. Okay, great question. And I think probiotic has had its heyday and it's going to be around forevermore because it's so important. But I think it's been really well advertised, really well marketed. So people know what probiotics are and they're the bacteria, they're the microbes that reside in your digestive system or more commonly are bought in capsules. So probiotics, people buy the capsules, but the probiotics are the microbes uh, and obviously you get them in sauerkraut and other um, unpasteurized fermented products, kefir, kombucha and what have you. The new kid on the block is prebiotics and prebiotics are the preferred food source of the microbes. So the probiotics are the microbes and the prebiotics Okay, are so food. prebiotics are feeding the microbiome. Exactly. Okay, so what kind of foods do they particularly really go for then, the microbiome? I mean, they're a pretty diverse group of microorganisms in there. Do they all like the same kind of thing or do they, you know, they must have a different, more microorganisms have a different preference, but are there certain foods that are more probiotic, pre, pro, prebiotic than others? Yeah, exactly. I think at the minute, vegetable fiber is getting a really, really preferable interest because the, the fibers that, that you don't personally break down, transit into the large intestine and becomes food for the prebiotic. So most of the preferred probiotics that you want like vegetable fiber and there's things like jerusalem artichoke leeks onions garlic dandelion greens have just an extraordinary amount of prebiotic fiber i think all vegetables fruits and vegetables and their in the fiber structure soluble and insoluble fiber is a good food source for the microbes okay certain so food in my line of work, which is GAPS, as you know, gut and psychology syndrome, Dr. Natasha has just released a second, uh, a fourth book, actually, um, a second GAPS book, specifically G-A-P-S. It's called Gut and Physiology Syndrome. And it goes into things like failure to thrive, or which means a baby that's basically allergic to its own mother's milk. Mm. Um, and various other conditions that people are really scratching their heads about and going, oh my God, how are we supposed to get over this one? And she's managing to bring children like this that are allergic to their own mother's proteins um, back to a state of functioning and actually putting on weight and thriving, surviving at least, and then potentially thriving later on when they start to eat, eat more diverse foods. But to begin with, they're offered a kind of infant formula that is completely free from any um, plant, plant uh, products at all. And it's just a, a chicken stock from the pasture fed, you know, organic biodynamic live um, a biodynamic source, um, chicken livers and um, egg yolks and things like that. These sort of like a very, when you say, when you were talking about healing the skin of piercings and things like that, I was thinking, and you said building blocks. I was, uh, um, I have been taught by Dr. Natasha that the, the building blocks from her perspective are essential fatty acids, essential amino acids, um, as in certain animal proteins and animal fats that um, are from her point of view, um, nutrient dense as in the, they're, and they are the building blocks, she says, for fixing up the body when it's broken. So are you um, vegetarian and, or, or vegan? Are you still raw vegan now? No, no, no. no I definitely, if we'd have carried on uh, with, with my story, uh, I gave myself digestive issues and I don't want to point any fingers at the fact that I was having a raw vegan diet. I take responsibility. I wasn't uh, at that time educated enough on enough diverse foods to feed the microbiome so 
I say to people, I kind of um, gave myself indigestion by just eating so many raw vegetables and, you know, but doing it slightly um, without the full picture. And so then I added in fermented foods and that really cleared my indigestion. It wasn't really indigestion, but that's just a simplified way to understand it. And it was at a very similar time of fermenting foods that I also got introduced to Natasha Campbell's work. And that was very close to working at Plore Hatch Farm. I, I, I think that's yeah. we probably yeah. met. Um, and then watching families that I even had, I literally had a grandmother one time come in with her, her child who was nonverbal, they couldn't make eye contact. And she said by following this GAPS protocol, she, her grandson now actually has a quality of life. And he's, he can commute, you know, with a loved one, it's not necessarily verbal communication, but there was a sense of communication. Whereas for his first four or five years of his life, he was just absent. His parents and his grandparents had no way of communicating with him. He was so... It's so heartbreaking. And Dr. Natasha would say that this is all about toxicity in the gut. And when we can yeah. clear that toxicity, then the body can start to fix itself with those nutrient dense foods we were talking about. And then we can actually bring the children back to fully functioning and, um, mm. You know, it is wonderful. Some children do communicate um, on another level with their parents non-verbally, and that's beautiful. That's a beautiful thing. But what, how is the child going to communicate with the rest of the world? <laughs> so it's worth applying the GAPS protocol um, and any other protocols we think might help anything, because lots of things will help, won't they, to yeah. bring these children back to fully functioning. It's not okay for them to remain in this sort of desensitized world where they can't actually communicate. And it, it doesn't have to be that way. So that's really lovely to hear you tell that story. Yeah. Well, it really touched me. You know, the yeah. grandma was nearly in tears and the story, and that really amplified me then looking into gaps. And it's like, I see humanity, we're all on a spectrum and this kid, unfortunately, or, or fortunately was at one stage of the spectrum. But if him going on a GAPS diet could trans makes a world of difference to his communication and connection to family, I'm like, well, I wonder what that would do to me. And I very quickly got into a high fat ketogenic diet and very, very quickly felt some incredible effects. Um, and so it's probably around the time I would have seen you around the farm, I was living on the farm and I went into exploring this high fat ketogenic diet that had a lot of bone broth and a lot of stocks and a lot of animal products. And that was probably two years after being raw vegan. So there's a, a massive, a massive shift. I think it's a wonderful way to do it though, because raw veganism is super cleansing, super, mm. super cleansing. It's the most cleansing thing you can do. And I'm sure that there are people out there who are able to live, I mean, like the breatharians, you know, they are able to live with hardly any conventional nourishment that we would think of as, as nourishment because they're kind of on another level of existence where they're sort of like so high vibration that they just got to look at the sun and breathe the, breathe the oxygen in the air and just, just soak up the vibe of life and they seem to thrive. I mean, yeah. I'd like to get there one day. I really, really would. I'm aiming for it. But, you know, for now... I'm yeah I'm into my bone broth and my high fat um and people when I think when people are really uh really really sick and they try to persevere with the super cleansing raw vegan um way they can often make themselves a lot worse mm. and, um I, 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 I am definitely aiming for not having to eat much food you know for the rest of my life frankly I think it's a wonderful what do you think about you know well, you're talking about altered states. Do you would you call that spirituality? Altered state spirituality. Um, I guess so. Uh, kind of no. trying investigating other realms of perception, other realms of um, that's not is that spirituality? It's kind of like it's it's embracing the unseen and the energetic. Yeah, yeah, for me, I guess I class it as spirituality. I guess I hesitated because I went on this journey with a few friends that were just like adamant, you know, they were pretty atheist and they wasn't spiritual. It, it, they could explain these phenomena, phenomenon through science, you know, through yeah. fasting and, you know, you're going to affect your, uh, you know, your state of perception through these. Di and so the, for me, it, it, for me, it was very spiritual. Um, and 
but for them it wasn't but we were having similar experiences yeah. and I but I love the fact that it then got me reading more spiritual books and you know I was at quite a young age and I, I went to Brighton and it, so I could really fit in with these different groups of people so yes when you yeah for me that is um but I have to say I've got a few friends that are massively into altering states of consciousness and they think I'm a bit wishy-washy with my kind of spiritual lingo uh, and they can explain it away in very you know pragmatic scientific terms um, but just the experiences I had were outside of me I, you know I'd come back from experience and be like wow I, I was like it kind of it came through me it wasn't even me um, and so that then turned me looking into, you know, spiritual. Or maybe, maybe it was the greater energy of which we are all little divine sparks. And mm. then you've kind of sensed the, the, the bigness of it, you know, that coming through you. I don't know. I try and think of it as mother, mother earth, father sky, you know, universal energy, mother, mater, material, you know, soil, web of life you know i am of this place i'm an earthling but yeah. i can be open to the universal energy that can just like like a big funnel kind of pour down through into me and i can be like a beam me up scotty beam of light and then send my light out shooting wherever i want it kind of thing you know and then that we all have that ability you know so and but how do you feel about some people say that if we eat animal products it may cut us off from that source what do you think about that it's a great question. I, uh, I still have friends that think that and kind of feel like I fell off the wagon. It's like, because how can... they're eating animal products, they feel like they fell off the wagon. No, I got friends, you know, they're very into their yoga, raw vegan friends. Okay. Um, that I, you know, God, 10 years ago I was hanging out with and they were doing regular spiritual practices every day. And for them, um, Every, every animal, insect, obviously was sacred. And I don't, I'm not saying that you or me who now eat meat don't deem every animal or insect sacred. But they said, if you reach this understanding that all animals are sentient beings and you cannot deprive them of their existence, they think, how did you get to that understanding and then go back to eating animals? Uh, and it was a natural progression. Um, I guess as far as your previous question about spirituality, I was and have been massively interested in Native Americans. And just as a culture, you can't say there's been a culture that's been, it's a weird analogy, been more spiritual. They're so connected to Father Sky and Mother Earth. They ate animal products. And in fact, they lived, and it sounds weird again, but on death. They would have not survived their winters without the fleeces, without the animal skins, without their teepees, all made of animal hide. And so it's like, they're the most spiritual culture, I believe, you know, it's, it's, you can't have like a hierarchy, but they just practice this incredible connection to everything. They spoke to the animals, they spoke to, to great mother, great father. They weren't vegans or vegetarians. And it's like, it's living in harmony with it. You shouldn't take too much and you shouldn't really, you know, not know where the meats or the animal products come from. So it's not from a mega dairy or a mega farm. That's more of an issue than actually, as you or me do, buying locally sourced, locally reared animal products. Absolutely. Yeah, I absolutely agree with you. Um, uh, yeah, I've, I have struggled with this idea of if you eat meat, it may impact your connection to source. Um, but having kept pigs myself and kept mm. sheep and kept chickens and thrown myself into learning how to be a smallholder, um, it is, you do form bonds with your animals. And I sort of became a, a slave to my pigs, if you like. I was sprouting beans and barley for them every day. I was collecting all of the stuff from the back of seasons to give them the, you know, they were getting biodynamic squashed grapes and <laughs> tomatoes and all sorts of yummy delicacies, you know. And I, you could feed them by hand with your fingers with a little grape and they would take it, for, you know, with their little lips. They were sweethearts, the piggies. 
Um, and I absolutely love them. But every day you go to them, you feed them, you give them a lovely soft bed, you give them somewhere to keep warm and dry, you bring them fresh water, you bring them lovely food, you, you know, let them express their pigginess by running about underneath the oak trees. You you're thinking about them all the time and loving them. And the deal is they have a lovely piggy life for about a year and then one of them offers themselves and then I get to live. And when you think about it, what's happening inside our guts? There's just an endless cycle of living and dying, living and dying, living and dying, living and dying. You know, all these creatures, these, this ecosystem inside us is built on life. And that's what we're a part of in the cycle of life is living and dying, living and dying, living and dying, and living and dying and re being reborn, living and dying and being reborn, you know. So I don't feel as though it's a, um, sort of you know hard and fast cut and dried argument you know i think it's great to decide on a spiritual level on a kind of like i'd like i'd like to get better connected to source and better connected to my ancestor and better connected to the potential when i'm using the power of my human intention to create the reality around me which we're all capable of to maybe go raw vegan for a couple of weeks and spend some time quietly you know, contemplating and imagining the best, best possible outcomes and, and um, getting, getting in an altered state maybe because, you know, when, when you eat very lightly like that, um, you're fasting really. It's a cleansing yeah. thing and you're fasting. So that's a wonderful way to work with your body to um, achieve heightened states. But of course, if you're ill and in pain and you're not functioning properly and your body's a bit broken and you're trying to be raw vegan then maybe you need some chicken soup to actually mend your body to um so that you can not be in pain so that you can manage to meditate or you know use the power of your human intention or whatever so anyway, it's not one or the other is it it's just everybody all together and at different times you want going to be wanting to do different things aren't you let's face it absolutely so, one time i saw a post you did and it was about um your shoes and you have <laughs> shoes and that they, they had like toes on them i think yeah and i'm not sure if they were also grounding shoes that grounded you i think that that, that range of shoes i was looking at were all very grounding because they're very thin soles so the vibram five fingers have the individual they're like socks but obviously yeah. and tough enough that you can run outside with them um, and i tried them and then i tried the vivo bare feet and the Vivos actually won out because they were more grounding. They've got incredibly thin soles to the shoes, which just an allows you to make real contact to the earth. But did they actually have a metallic strip through them or something that actually connected you ele electrically to the earth? To the oh, no. 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 Okay. I've seen shoes that do something similar. There's uh, Camper have a very expensive shoe that have certain particles that literally discharge any static electricity buildup. Yeah, this is what I'm interested in because there's a guy I know called, uh, well, I don't know him, but I know of, called Jerry Tennant, who has a book called Healing is Voltage. And mm -hmm. we are separated from the frequency of the earth by the rubber soles of our rubber wellies and our shoes and whatnot, and the synthetic carpets that we shuffle along, creating this static charge. And mm -hmm. um, actually I've got my, um, this is my latest favorite thing. It's, um, it's a, a personal ionizer. So it sends out negative ions. So uh, it gives a sort of atmosphere around you when you wear it as if you were by the seaside or sitting under a pyramid or something like that. And um, this is what we do when we go and get our bare fit on the grass is we discharge the positive ions and take on the negative ions and it balances us all out really nicely. And that's what I thought the shoes were doing for you was actually grounding you as you were walking along. But I got the wrong end of the stick, obviously. I'd like some shoes like that. Yeah, I think if you can get quick to market and get a manufacturer, that there will be the next big thing. I think there's, there's a definite market for it. And like I say, I've looked into that and I think Camper, do a shoe that has it is got certain I think particles in the sole that is meant to be able to allow this discharge of static okay. energy. Uh, the Vivo bare feet are specifically designed so you're not always making he you're not always heel striking as you walk. So because you, if you're barefoot, you don't generally heel strike. When you've got thick shoes, just through convenience, you heel strike. 
and that is bad for your alignment. So the Vivo bare feet have it, it, a really well designed sole and it's very thin on the shoe that your feet impact or make contact with the floor in a very natural way. Um, I stopped wearing them. I think this is probably the post you're talking about. I stopped wearing them for a couple of years because they were so expensive. And then I got gifted a pair and I wore them again. And then I couldn't go back to wearing my other trainers. And my other trainers were for all intents and purposes. They were trainers. They weren't even like tight, restrictive shoes. They were like fabric, soft trainers. But even the transition of wearing these bare feet after, and it's when my son was really little, so he needed nap time most days. I literally felt my feet just flatten out and just go back to a natural shape. And wow. since then, I've not been able to wear anything but Vivo. Really? So pinches. I've got, I think I've got quite wide feet. And, so, and I've been wearing the Vivos for so long, my feet have naturally taken a more natural position. And when I wear something that arches my feet unnaturally, I, can, I, I feel it in my hips. So I'm not allowed to make contact to the floor properly. So I'm a big fan of these, these barefoot shoes. Vivo, I'd quite like to have it. Maybe we'll put that link in the um, thing under the, under the video when we've finished, eh? Sure. So how interesting. Um, do, you, do you eat ferments every day? Uh, no. No, not every day. No, Even I, I, really I mean, delicious snacks. You do like the sweet and sour kraut, little munchy, nibbly things, and you do the chocolatey. You do all this beautiful, amazing stuff, but you don't eat it every day. The, uh, we probably haven't got too long to go into it. it. It changed my life when I found Sandor Katz's book, and I can just imagine myself in my little bed sit. Wild fermentation. A nice original one. Yeah, That's man. The it's all faded and my brother found it. It's Kant, Sandor Kant. I love it. It says, um, a do-it-yourself guide to cultural manipulation. <laughs> he is such a dude. I love him so much. Totally, man. Totally. Um, and yeah, I got into fermented foods. I think uh, this was a year or so before I met you at the farm. So I was still coming off being vegan. Um, and I, I was going to the farm at that time to get the raw dairy, to make raw dairy kefir. And I was making sauerkraut from his book. And at that time, I think I ate something fermented with every single meal. And I did for a really long period of time. Right. And now you've recovered and you don't need to do it all of the time. Is that, is that the exactly, thing? exactly. Yeah. And I, I don't know if this is something we can go into here, but I do the Viome test, which is a stool analysis. Oh yeah. Uh, you know, I don't want to... Yeah, go for it. People might like to know. Well, it's just fantastic because it looks at your poo. It's a stool sample and it looks at the byproducts that have been created from your gut bugs. Obviously, it's only a snapshot of the last oh, 20 years. Yeah, exactly, that day. Yeah. Exactly. But it gives you a good example and there's certain uh, in, inflammatory molecules that are created by the gut bugs. And that's when they get certain food. So um, I was promoting eating fermented food every day. And I think it was on the back of me eating fermented food every day for probably like seven or eight years. My Viome test said, take a break from having sauerkraut, kefir, yogurt, uh, histamine uh, increasing foods because I'd had too much of it. So I've, I've pulled back. So that's my real reason for not eating sauerkraut or kefir every day. Because so I've got a taste palate that really enjoys both those flavors. And so for about seven years, I did have sauerkraut and kefir every day. But as, and this is just a really good example for you, for me, because it's taken me years to, if something's really good for you, more and more and more and more and more of it doesn't necessarily make it better. Uh, and that's a lesson at, as I'm getting older, I'm learning. That's such a great thing for people to hear. It's so great for people to hear that, actually. Really good. Well, this is the first time I've said it, you know, that's going to go out to people. Um, and as someone, like you said, that makes so many fermented products, I, you know, I don't want to say, oh, I don't eat them, but it, it would possibly make a great video if I kind of talk people through my Viome. Because I've done 
since it said don't have kefir, I didn't for six months. I did a stool sample again, and all of a sudden kefir was then in the bracket of my superfoods. It gives you the foods to eat more of and foods to eat less of. Well, they make of. suggestions, do they? They do a stool uh, sample, and then they make suggestions about what might be good or not for you. I wonder how they can tell. This is a whole new science, isn't it? Exactly. It's a massive, massive, massive company out in the States. More and more people are doing it. You can definitely and have been able to get your stool and that stool sample analysed for years, but then you get all these long words of the species and phylum of all the creatures and you've you're got. like what does that mean even exactly, exactly. so they've got people in-house that kind of you know work out what interpret. food interpret it so that's why i love biome test because you literally have a list and they call it your superfoods uh, foods that are okay and then foods to avoid and that's going to change all the time isn't it and it's going to change yeah, everyone so I've got, all the time exactly so i've got five it's quite an expensive project to do, but it's kind of, so, so I can justify it because it's so in line with my work and then it gives me and things to talk about. But I've got five readings and it goes from sauerkraut, histamine, like dark chocolate, kefir, red wine, coffee, all the things I love. I got a, one time I got a reading that said avoid, avoid them, not just reduce them, it said avoid all these things. And that was a really interesting six months off red wine, off coffee, wow. off, <laughs> off, off sauerkraut, literally all the things. And I went, well, it makes sense because I eat mostly things every day. Now, no wonder I'm, I'm building up, because not an allergy. Everything in moderation, like our grandparents used to say, everything in moderation. And, and, and for, for all things, there is a season. Exactly. So I, I reduced all of my intake for those things over the next year. And then I did a stool analysis. And all of a sudden, all those things are back on my superfood list because they right. are great foods. They are really <laughs> great foods. But note to self, you don't need to eat all of them all the time. <laughs> so great to hear. That is really good news. I'm just writing a few notes here. Of course. I'm not going to listen back to this because I never do, but I'm going to post it. So that's so interesting. So you, that's really interesting. D do you ever get ill? Yeah, I do. Um, this is a, a very topical subject. My partner, after our son, who's now two, got a return to work. She's an, an actress and she went up to London. I think it was March of this year, March the 5th. So it was just pre-lockdown. So she managed to, you know, I think literally the week later the theatre shut. But she got into a theatre, was in a closed building doing sound recording with, I think, maybe 15 other singers and actors and what have you. Uh, and there was talk that someone's friend or someone's uh, housemate had thought they had COVID. And so that was the talk. And my partner came home the next day and exhibited all the signs of COVID, but they're similar signs, aren't they? Now they know about the taste and the smell, but the other signs are also flu symptoms. So she thought she had COVID, I thought she had flu. She was in bed for a week, and then maybe three or four days in, I started to exhibit signs and symptoms, and I knew something was wrong. For me, and if you're aware of your for, it's like temperature. I had like shivers and my temperature was fluctuating. So I knew something was wrong. So yeah, I probably had some chicken soup. And I had that for about two days. And then on the third day, I was fine. So I definitely don't want to jinx it and say, no, no, yeah, I don't get Yeah, right. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. I think I'm set up that when I start to feel ill, I've got some homemade elderberry syrup. I've got the chicken stock in the freezer. You know, I reduce further anything sweet and increase you know more nourishing health foods the so fats and the stock and whatnot yeah yeah cool so yeah i haven't been ill badly for a while yeah i i used to get um sort of a bronchitis every year i used to get like a really bad chest infection like most years and um snotty noses and you know my mucous membranes were inflamed and my, i could tell my whole now in hindsight i can look back and go wow i was so toxic and so i always had you know candida and thrush and itchy bits and like that you know and um i got very very depressed when i was 28 and i sort of stopped eating because I couldn't eat every time I tried to put food in my mouth I just sort of burst into tears and that made me fast involuntarily I didn't even know what I was doing but I fasted and then I found a yoga center where I could do yoga and meditation for free if I showed up at six o'clock in the morning and helped with the washing up or whatever so um 
that was the beginning of the rest of my life and you know it was fabulous I sort of feel as though that breakdown I had um, was really the beginning of me enjoying my life you know I highly recommend a mental breakdown to anyone <laughs> <It's> <laughs> terrible but when you come out the other side and there are ways and means if you choose to come if you choose to find the way to come out the other side you know uh, it can happen in all sorts of ways can't it gaps is a really good way to help with anxiety and depression gaps gut and psychology syndrome specifically was developed wasn't it by dr natasha campbell mcbride who was a surgeon uh, in neurology he was a neurological surgeon whose son was then was vaccine damaged and she brought him back to fully functioning after taking a second medical degree to become a nutritionist so she is like super well um qualified and i had a cup of tea with her recently and what I said, actually it wasn't recently it was a couple of, it was a year ago or two years ago now at uh, groundswell.ag groundswellag.org which is a, a conference for uh, agricultural big boys with their big toys with their massive machines who are realizing that something's going horribly wrong and that we need to do something else so they're working on no-till and polycultures that you then let the animals graze across and then you under sow that so that you get a mulch so that you're building topsoil basically it's very exciting anyway groundswell mm -hmm. massive really massive conference um that is really giving me hope that the big farmers of this land are going to move forward into a new way of farming on a big scale that will actually protect the land keep the water clean build topsoil you know increase the biodiversity of the biome of the soil which is what we all need to do, isn't it? Culture and cultivate the biome of our microbiome as well as in the soil. So that made me hopeful. So Thank are you, you are you managing to, we've only got a little while longer and I'm gonna to have to sign off, but it's been fascinating so far. Are you keeping up with demand with your wonderful prebiotic, probiotic snack food business in the south of England? Yeah, just, just. I'm at that glass ceiling where I need to start employing more people or get some bigger machinery, but it's tricky because I want to keep everything handmade. And um, so, yeah, there's not the cash flow to employ people or to invest in better, bigger, better equipment. Um, but I'm just riding this just below the glass ceiling, just stabilizing, working out what products are really working and really selling products that are scalable. So, yeah, I'm kind of at that interesting stage. Yeah, man. I in an to... ideal world, what would be nice? Would you like a business partner to come along with, with some investment money and um, somebody to bounce off? Or what would, what would be your ideal? Um... No, 100%. I don't know if we've spoken about it before, but that's 100% it. I love being in the kitchen. And for about, well, for about two years now, I'm like, just stop developing products because you just need to... You're a an alchemist, aren't you? I want to mix a bit of this and mix a bit of that. It comes to me, if, I, if I'm honest, and this is why I'm still really open about spirituality and I don't flaunt it in front of people, but if people want to talk about it, it's like, these ideas I have literally come from nowhere. It's like Bing. someone in my ear, it's like, why haven't you done a healthy Chris? I'm like, what? And, you know, I've got sauerkraut to this left of me, I've got some sprouting activated chia and flaxseed, and then I'm just like, I could literally put sauerkraut and, you know, the binding agents of flax and chia seed, add a few other ingredients, dehydrate it, and you've got a crisp. And it's like, I think that day I was meant to be doing my accounts or setting up some invoice system. And I'm just like, my God, I can't not make sauerkraut crisps. And I think I've not revisited my accounts and my invoices since that day. So, yeah, I just need someone that has the business acumen that allows me to keep developing products and, and working in the kitchen, which is where absolutely my passion and my love is. But anyone that has a business, you need, you need, I need to have a day, at least a day or two a week, doing all the, the books and the back end of things. And I just hate that. So I, I've kind of developed a very thriving business on the creative side of things, but there's just more work that needs doing kind of back end. Back -end creatively visualize that and manifest that for you Alex you're doing a really really great job I really admire your work and I'm, I'd love for it to grow and flourish into something that more people can enjoy than the lucky people in the southeast of England are already um, just one last question and then we're going to sign off and you can tell everyone where we can find you if they want to seek you out um, 
Do you find that your ferments are affected by astrological uh, influences? Such a great question. To some, uh, I don't, if I answer that, no, I haven't, I haven't, you know, it's got me thinking as soon as you mentioned that question. I'm sure they are, but I haven't put that cap on. Um, but because, you, you know, I'm doing quite large ferments. And just the other day, I was in the kitchen potting up with a friend. I thought this has been a shorter ferment, but I was checking the acidity, but it's more acidic, which is really unusual for this last batch, which was a really long ferment. So I was like, it has the radiators come on in the kitchen? Has, you know, did we, was you and me, when we made the sacrifice, did we massage it more? How come this has dropped the pH, which you'd expect at like a six week ferment, but it was only at four weeks. Yeah. And I was like, has it got warmer? What's happened? Yeah. Do we use less salt? Because it's gone. And so I haven't actually bought the astrological. So, I, do you know, I had a, there was a guy, oh, and I think it, you might have known him. Um, oh, I can't remember his name. Jean-Michel. No, I can't remember his name now, but he was, he was doing the bakery. He was doing oh, yeah. The, yeah. And he said that his bread would rise differently when the moon was in certain part of the sky kind of yeah, thing yeah. and that the astrological influences really affect the microorganisms as they do with us i'm pretty sure you know. well that's why you said it i was like of course now i need to work out what was happening this last four weeks to make well, it this might be worth just getting yourself one of those calendars that goes up on the wall where you can see mm -hmm. where the moon is at and what's it doing and then also which like i just got this new diary for the season which it's a moon diary and so it gives you um it's lovely earth pathways um I got published in here just before we started the work we did at the crossing, but it's lovely. It's all people from all over and everyone contributes. So it gives you the phases of the moon on each day. And then also which sign the moon is because that affects things differently when the moon's in Aries, things are like yeah. such a thing. And when the moon's in Libra, it's because like, this is sort of moving on from the biodynamic planting kind of, because you use biodynamic vegetables in a lot of your ferments, don't you? Yeah, mostly at, at this time of year, I'm using Tablehurst and Lane, so it's 100% biodynamic. Wow, because they... Again, no reason that I should be paying attention to the moon, because when I collect the vegetable from either of those farms, I always, can I have, I always have a word with the farmer, because I'm just so fascinated about biodynamic farming. And I just, what does it mean to you, and you know, what are the differences? And I always have Stephen at Tablehurst or Tuse at Lane's, always explain to me their perspective on biodynamic farming. Yeah, and I you? are kind of culturing and cultivating yourself there. So you're a grower, as it were. You're yeah. growing microorganisms. It's amazing. So you're, it's kind of, in this, it's bound to affect it. And I'm very fascinated to find out how it might more. So that's been so interesting to talk with you. And where can people find you then, Alex? So organogy.co.uk is the website. And then I try and keep up um, some content on Facebook, which is organogy.uk, uh, and then on Instagram, which is just organogy. Um, it's a great yeah. name, organogy, energy for your organs. Organ Maybe, organogy. I'm energy. glad it's come from that side of the, you know, normally I have to explain that to people and people are like, what? So I'm, I'm glad. Yeah, been it's lovely, little play on words and the alchemy of it all. It's beautiful. So lovely to talk with you. Take yeah, you care, too. Alex. Thanks so much for having me on, Emma. You're very welcome. Bye. Okay. Yes.